Hey everyone, first off, I know I have a weird mask on, it's because I'm still healing from surgery, so uh, enjoy the weird face that I got going on. But, the clip you're about to watch right now is from my recently released Sex in Star Trek The Next Generation video. This video is honestly one of the videos I am most proud of ever making, and I don't think I put more work into a video on this channel ever before than this one, and I think it's emblematic of what I hope to do with my work on this channel moving forward. That being said, the video is five and a half hours long, and I certainly understand people getting intimidated by that length. Believe me, length can be scary. But it's not the size of your YouTube video, it's what you do with it. So I wanted to take a section from that video to show you why I am particularly proud of this series, and a clip that stands, I think, on its own. So I hope you enjoy this moment from the video. And if you like this clip, please check out the full video. Don't worry, while it is long, it's made to be welcoming to both hardcore trackies and someone who's never seen a single episode of Star Trek before, and I also intended it to be watched in more than one sitting because, y'all know, I can go multiple rounds. But even if you don't watch that video, I thank you all for your support and thank you for being an amazing community and I hope you enjoy this fun segment. But before we deal with that harder stuff, why don't we um deal with some hard stuff and uh, get this Jahamarun going, if you know what I mean? I mean, we're already here on this nice bed. In fact, before we get going, I think the only question that I really have for you is, um. Do you want to use three nacelles, or do you want to use four? Because believe me, I can handle four nacelles. Okay, okay, whatever you want. But um, with that said, I think it's time we get our four gone. Okay, okay, stop that. This is YouTube. Y'all know that I cannot show that in this video, and shame on you for thinking that I'd even try. I need to hold out at least some shred of hope that I can monetize this video, even though it's probably a minuscule, far-off, distant hope in the Delta Quadrant. Six. I beg your pardon. But seriously though, if you do like me doing these really long overindulgent videos about sex in Star Trek, it does help me pay the bills if you do support me over on Patreon because heaven knows this video is not made to be algorithm friendly. But that's enough of me shilling for money in a video about a post-scarcity society. So, since I can't show you the sexy times, and since the YouTube's terms of agreement say that I can talk about sex as long as it's in an educational context, I figured I'd do something that might be a little bit educational with this time while the other me is having a little bit of a pawn far fun times. And I figure the best place to start when talking about sex education, at least as all the uh, people yelling about transgender issues today will say, is to talk about biology. And I think one of the best places to start to talk about biology in Star Trek is by briefly discussing Klingon anatomy. Glory to you and your house. Now, I know many of you may be thinking out there, but Jesse, how much can you know about the biology of a fictional alien race? Well, my friends, there's way more than you think. And yet, it only raises more questions. Questions about what? To start us off, one of the most important things that we learned about Klingon anatomy is found in the episode Ethics. You know, that's the episode where Worf gets injured because Starfleet can't invest in a freaking bungee cord. While Worf lies paralyzed, Crusher says this. The Klingons refer to it as the Brock Lull. Almost every vital function in their bodies has a built-in redundancy in case any primary organ or system fails. So we learn in that episode that Klingons apparently have redundant organs. Two hearts, two livers, things like that. Just in case all of that warrior lifestyle makes one of them get broke, apparently. I guess that technically means that one of their arms is redundant, or one of their legs is redundant. All the extra organs means just that much more can go wrong. This is not like Doctor Who, because in Doctor Who we learn that the Doctor, who is a Time Lord, actually has two hearts. And it's kind of implied that they need both of them in order to survive. I've only got one heart working. How do you people cope? They can live with one for a short amount of time, but they kind of do need both to be running on full steam. Welcome back, Lefty! Whoa! Two hearts! Woo! Back in the game! With Klingons, though, one of their hearts is there just... cuz. Why not? Fuck it. Didn't mean to offend you. You didn't. 
yet. Not sure how evolution was supposed to make that happen, but uh, evolution in Star Trek has uh, always been a little bit wonky. I mean, apparently humans are destined to evolve into sex salamanders, so we can look forward to that in our future. I, I don't know what to say, except I don't remember very much about, uh, you know. How's that for the utopian vision of the future of humanity? So, if Klingons have redundant organs, this naturally led all of us Trekkies to raise one of the most important questions that Star Trek fans have ever asked. How many dicks do Klingons have? These are the questions that Trekkies need to know. I was just being polite, sir. Ah, commendable, Lieutenant. Now, all of you normal folks out there who, by the way, thank you for making it so long into this video. You are a champ, you. But you may be thinking, Okay, Jesse, calm down. It's all very funny, but we'll never actually know how many dicks a Klingon has. Maybe some weirdo fan fiction out there will answer that for you, but we'll never know for sure. Well, to that, like Kalos did to the Klingon gods, I laugh at because we know officially in Star Trek canon how many dicks a Klingon has. In the season one finale of Star Trek Discovery, the crew of the USS Discovery visits the Klingon home planet of Kronos, or Kronos, depending on how you want to spell it, and they teleport to the surface. In one scene, the ineffable Sonequa Martin-Green is walking around town like the freaking boss that she is after having visited a brothel that is run by Ron Howard's brother. And in the background, a particular Klingon, drunk in the fashion of Kalos himself off of liberalist libations of Klingon blood wine, stumbled into the darkness of an alley to relieve himself in true onerous tradition, and we see, clearly, in the scene, two streams of pee. So, officially, canonically, in Star Trek, we know, for sure, Klingons have two dicks. And people say that the Star Trek Discovery writers don't know Star Trek. <laughs> in reality though, the Discovery writers are out here doing the prophet's work and giving us the answers to the questions we've always wanted answered. But not only did they tell us that, they also answered another important question at the same time. Klingon dicks, one on top of the other, not side to side. <laughs> but this now being answered, I do have more questions. Do Klingons also have two vaginas? How do Klingons fuck non-Klingons? Are there different genders assigned to different numbers of genitals? Do Klingons even assign gender roles based on genitals? Are there intersex Klingons born with like different numbers of genitals, like two penises and a vagina, or three penises? Are Klingons seen as more masculine or less masculine if they only have one penis? Like maybe they're like, oh, you only have one penis? Oh, you're less of a dude. But maybe it's also sort of like, oh, you only have one penis? Oh, that's a real man right there. He only needs one. And if one of the penises is redundant, does that mean one of the Klingon's boobs is redundant too? Do Klingon women have two wombs? Do Klingon penises have barbs on them? Do Klingon vaginas have barbs on them? <laughs> Are Klingons like sharks who also have two penises and then like bite the woman to mate? That sounds very Klingon. <laughs> So many questions, and sadly, only folks brave enough like Mike McMahon will answer. This is a call out. I'm calling you out, Mike McMahon. Answer these questions for me. Give me the Lower Decks episode about it. But despite all those questions, I do have one last one that I want to have you be thinking about for the rest of this video. Just kind of have it lingering over the air as we continue our journey about sex in Star Trek The Next Generation. Something that I just want you to constantly always have ever present in your mind anytime that you watch The Next Generation from now on. Do you think Deanna Troy got double penetrated by Worf when they were dating and that's why she didn't go with Riker at the end of the series? And the most you can say is stimulating? It was very stimulating. Yeah. Be thinking about that every single time you're watching All Good Things now. You're gonna be going, oh, 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 oh. 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 Kinda makes the whole Worf Deanna Troy romance thing make a whole lot more sense now, doesn't it? Do you regret what happened last night? No, of course not. Anyways, this has been a Klingon biology lesson with Jesse. And it's been about 
five minutes or so, and that seems like enough time for me to have had Jaha Maron and plenty of time to spare, unless they get caught in a time loop thing, in which case, uh, good for them. But with that being said, let's jump back to your regularly scheduled way over long look at Star Trek The Next Generation. Thank you so much for watching that clip. I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, don't forget to check out the full Sex and Star Trek The Next Generation video or the original Sex and Star Trek video. Both, I think, are some of my best videos I've ever done. I also recently did a James Gunn video that I am also deeply proud of. James Gunn himself even retweeted it. So that's how you know it's possibly good. Hopefully good. Anyways, uh, please check out both of those videos. I am really very proud of them. Also, next week I have an unhinged review of Star Trek Strange New World Season 1 coming out. And in that video, I'll be announcing when I'll be revealing my face post-surgery. So be on the lookout for that. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos like it. I also have a Patreon that you can help supporting me doing what I do. It what allows me to recover and take time off from surgeries like my face healing right now. Uh, but beyond all of that, I'm also on Nebula. I have a podcast where I view episodes of uh, Babylon 5 with my friend Vera Wild from the Council of Geeks channel called Jumpgate. But beyond all of that, I just wish to say thank you and I hope that you all, my friends, live long and prosper. <laughs>